Welcome to chapter eight of Intro to Psychology. In this video, I'll be discussing ways to enhance your memory, particularly as it comes to studying for exams. So the first two basic tips that you probably already know uh, and that we described earlier, particularly in our lab section, are chunking and using mnemonic devices. Uh, so chunking is just separating information into more manageable bits or chunks. So for example, uh, when memorizing a phone number, uh, it's easier to remember uh, three chunks of digits rather than uh, uh, all 10 digits all at once. Uh, or for example, if you're, trying, if you're in a biology class and you're trying to memorize the 20 different types of amino acids, it might be good to try to remember four at a time instead of all uh, 20 individually so that your brain treats those uh, four as, uh, or those, those five groups of four uh, as five units uh, rather than 20 units. And then there's mnemonic devices. So using things like uh, every good boy deserves fudge to remember the notes on the treble clef or uh, Mr. Them J. Sun to remember uh, the order of the planets uh, in, in the direction from the sun uh, are useful things for uh, categorizing information to make it easier to remember. Uh, some more advanced uh, memory strategies include using elaborative rehearsal. And so that is uh, thinking about the meaning of new information and its relation to knowledge that is already stored in your memory. So whenever you are uh, taking in information that you want to remember later, uh, it, a useful strategy is to tie that new information to, to other information that is already easy to remember. So for example, let's say you're trying to memorize the 50 uh, states in the United States, uh, and you've, uh, you've been lucky enough to travel to all 50 states. Uh, you might try, instead of just trying to remember them uh, alphabetically, you could try to picture yourself in each of those states and picture what the monuments were like or, or what the, the feelings or what the sounds were like in each of those states or, or in each of the major cities in those states. Uh, that is using more modalities. It's using your visual as well as your auditory processing abilities uh, to make that memory even more vivid than just a series of words in alphabetical order. Um, other people learn uh, the 50 states by using a song. Uh, that's another great strategy. It's adding a, another layer of acoustic uh, processing uh, to help you remember that information in an even more uh, vivid man manner. Uh, and so the most important thing is, is to remember to elaborate what you are learning. So not just to take the basic information that you've been given, but to elaborate it and make it something bigger. Probably the most important memory strategy that I can share with you, uh, particularly as it relates to the academic context, is to study in the same way that you will be tested. And this sounds very straightforward, but is probably one of the most underused study strategies. So most academic exams examine uh, free recall or recognition memory or uh, some combination of the two. So if you're doing a multiple choice test, uh, that's a recognition memory test. You're being asked to recognize what the correct answer is among a selection. Uh, whereas if you're doing a kind of essay test or some essay question, uh, that's more free recall where you're being asked to generate information that you've learned. And so it's important that when you're taking either type of those exams, uh, that you practice in the same way that you will be tested. Uh, so uh, uh, in, in both of those uh, types of exams, what's being asked of you is to retrieve information. Uh, on an exam, you're not being asked to encode information into sensory memory or short-term memory. You're not being asked to rehearse information or consolidate it into long-term memory. You're being asked to retrieve information from long-term memory. And so what we often find is that when we're studying for exams, we spend a lot of time, you know, perhaps even at the last minute, reading over the textbook or reading over our notes. All that is, is encoding and perhaps rehearsing consolidation. Uh, whenever you're studying for anything or preparing for a presentation or uh, uh, a, a driving exam, what you want to do is practice in the same way and using the same processes that are gonna happen during the test, which is uh, almost always retrieval. So you wanna practice that retrieval uh, in, in the same format that you're being asked to do it. Uh, so uh, on the multiple choice test, uh, practicing uh, identifying and, and finding uh, the right answer in the selection or on the essay test, uh, practicing writing and figuring out what the gaps in your knowledge are. 
Uh, then, uh, very important as well, is to be aware of proactive and retroactive interference. So one way that I try to account for interference, uh, particularly on multiple choice questions, is to cover up the answers uh, so that I'm not distracted. So I read the question, don't look at the answers, and then think about what the answer should be in my head so that when I uh, uncover and look at the answers, it's very easy to recognize which answer is the right one or which answer is closest to what I had in my head. Otherwise, you've probably all experienced it where you look at the multiple choice answers and you start reading them and they all start, start sounding right. And it's a form of interference that's interfering with what, you are, uh, what you've already learned and put in long-term memory. And then two other quick uh, uh, ways to study smarter and not harder are, are to keep moving. Uh, there's plenty of evidence to show that aerobic exercise promotes uh, learning and memory uh, by uh, enabling uh, the growth of new brain cells in the hippocampus, uh, as well as getting enough sleep is hugely important for uh, consolidating memory uh, and making it easier to remember. Now let's do some practice questions. And you can try out the strategy of covering up the answers uh, until, you, uh, 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 until you are able to think of the answer on your own. So, remembering how to drive a car is an example of So this one's very easy. This the answer here would be D, procedural memory. Which category of memory failure is associated with the seven Sorry, which category of memory failure associated with the seven sins of memory is exemplified in the following situation? Amanda can't find her phone and can't remember where she put it. That's worded fun. So this would be a simple example of forgetting. How about this one? In the movie Finding Nemo, Dory, a regal blue tankfish, says that she suffers from short-term memory loss, which is actually a misleading statement. Dory's short-term memory is intact. She can hold information in her mind for 15 to 30 seconds before losing it. A more accurate description of her memory difficulties is that she suffers from blank, an inability to transfer information from short-term memory to form new long-term memories. What would we call that? And so here the answer is D, anterograde amnesia. And just to refer to this diagram once again, uh, Dory's short-term memories are actually intact. She's able to, to rehearse information and, and, and keep it there, uh, but then it never gets consolidated into long-term memory. And that is what we classically see in someone with anterograde amnesia. 